Azure Event Hubs is a fully managed real-time data ingestion service that is simple, trusted and scalable. In this video, we will be covering what are Azure Event Hubs, creating an event hub, evaluating the performance of an event hub, configuring applications to use an event hub, creating and configuring an event hub namespace and configuring event hub security. In the end, we will also share details about a free Azure Data Engineer Masterclass, which will not only help you understand basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning path to follow. It would be helpful, especially when you're preparing for Azure Data Science Certification. That's Data Engineering on Microsoft Azure DB203, which will earn you Azure Data Engineer Certification. Welcome to another episode of Azure Video Series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner, covering implement data storage and designing for data security to all the way designing for resilience, including batch processing, analytics, architecture, and monitoring, as well as how to prepare for the Azure Data Engineer certification. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on data engineering on Microsoft Azure. That's DP203. And in this clip, a Microsoft certified trainer will talk about Azure Event Hubs. So, this is a clip taken from a module on performing real-time analytics with Stream Analytics. Let's hear from an expert trainer on the same. Now, Azure Event Hub is built on Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is a very popular open source publisher subscriber model. And Event Hub is a service which is built on top of it. Now, Event Hub is a highly scalable publisher subscriber service that can ingest millions of events coming per second. And stream those these millions of events into multiple applications and those applications will be the event processors or the consumers who will consume the events and then further process it out. In the lab to create event hub, we are going to do two steps. First is we will create the namespace. Namespace is basically like a wrapper and inside the wrapper, we will have the instance of event hub, which is the real thing, which really takes the, which is the publisher subscriber, which takes the hit and uh, then trans, you can say forwards the streams into multiple application. So can I have more than one instance of event hub inside the namespace? Answer is yes. That's the purpose of it. So inside the wrapper call is namespace, you can have multiple event hub which are doing, which are ingesting millions of events per second. That is totally possible. In the lab section, we will literally create it, right? We can configure any application to talk to event hub by using the connection string of event hub. There is, we'll, in the lab, we'll go, we'll copy the connection string, we'll go to the simulator, uh, which will be running in our laptop. And in the configuration file of the simulator, we'll give the connection string. And when we will run it, it will start posting data to the event hub. Now we can evaluate the performance of event hub. And this particular functionality is embedded inside the service. So we can check out whether event hub is active right now, it is healthy, how many messages are there, and uh, how much data is being retained as such. So if you see the data retention is going up, it means that the consumers are not consuming the data in this point in time, and there is no data loss. So even if any consumer fails to consume the data, it, the data is not lost, it's basically stored in Event Hub. So all that information is available in the performance metric over there, and the dashboard looks like something which you have in the screen right now. Okay, check out a couple of questions. The application that published message to Event Hub very frequently will get the best performance by using advanced message queuing protocol because it established a persistent socket. The answer is yes. We have not talked about this, but this is FYI. By default, how many partitions will be there in Event Hub? Answer is default to in the lab when you create it, you can have a look at it. If an Event Hub goes offline before a consumer can process that event, does the data is is the data lost answer is no data is not lost data ingestion with event hub and individual exercises that we are doing or the main exercises in this lab are as follows we create and configure an event hub namespace then we can configure an event hub instance inside that and we configure event hub security like who can access and what rights do they have when they access event hub can they post or listen to the data so let's come to the task number one so basically what we are doing, we'll go to the Azure portal and we'll deploy one event hub. That's the first thing which we are doing. So you can click on create a resource from the top. And here we'll search for event hub and uh, just type it. 
event hub like that Sec second option and click on create so names we can give the same as they are in the activity guide so there is no confusion after after you can say in the steps because we are calling that go to this resource and do something go to that resource and do something so we are giving a name name space over here what's the meaning of namespace is like an outer boundary and then the instance of event hub will be inside that so let's give it uh, some name over here you can give your initials then phone analysis dot ehn that's the same name as as the activity guide as part of the pricing you can go for uh, actually standard will be good the first one you can also go for basic also that really in this doesn't matter so let's go for standard subscription leave it default whatever you can see so, uh, resource group you can select the previous one location let's go for any location such as maybe west europe east us or southeast asia is also good so west europe is good enough for us throughput unit we can leave empty also let's give it some throughput unit it means basically how much mb per second data can be ingested so let's set it to 20 that's actually more than enough uh, for this point in time but that's actually that's okay let's carry on and uh, once it is deployed it may take a couple of minutes for it to deploy but once it is deployed we'll get the pop-up saying uh, deployment successful and then we'll go and we'll create one instance inside that right so Let's go to the resource group and find it. it um, so if I go to my resource group and just click on, uh, let it load first. You can see third last option over there is event hub namespace. Click on it. Your name might be different, but the same option is there. And then we are going to create one event hub instance inside that. So we'll click on the first option over there and uh, let's give it a name. So as part of the name, let's give it uh, initials, phone analysis, and event hub uh, instance over there. EH, event hub, like that. Partition count, uh, we can leave. So right now, partition uh, really doesn't matter. Let it be, you can say we can leave it as uh, one as well. So message retention is how many days the message is going to be retained for. Uh, you can say one day, two days, 10 days, and so on and so forth. So one is good enough. And let's click on create after it. Now, once uh, this event hub will be, uh, it may take a couple of, uh, you can say maybe 30, 40, 50 seconds for it to come up. Once it is done, uh, we will just scroll down to the bottom of the page and the event hub instance will be there. And we are doing going to do the, the security part now. Security part basically means that there is a key by that key, someone will be able to either post data or maybe receive data. So we click on the event hub. Now be, be careful where you are doing it. We are doing it on event hub instance, not at the namespace level. We are doing on the event hub instance level. So I clicked on the event hub and now we clicked on the shared access policy and now we are clicking on add after that. And name can be of your choice or let's name it properly. So maybe we can give it a name, uh, maybe some sort of uh, event hub shared access policy, something like this over there, access, access policy shared access policy sap like that and let's click on what type of rights do we have we want to click on all three so if i click on all three it gets created and then just click on it and from here copy the endpoint you can find there four options are there second last is the one which we are going for uh, which is a primary connection string and let's note put that in a notepad so uh, let's store in a notepad so this is what we have done till now we did the event of policy creation. So that was a clip taken from one of the lessons from our step-by-step -step training program on data engineering on Microsoft Azure DP203. Now, I would like to invite you for a free 90-minute session with Microsoft Certified Expert Trainer, where we talk about Azure Data Engineer training and share information about getting certified by using our step-by-step -step roadmap to go from complete beginner to a certified Azure Data Engineer. If you are interested, register for a free class by going on to k21academy.com slash 20302. Additionally, we will show a live demo. We will also share information about the certification exam. So you can register for free by going on to this URL k21academy.com slash dp20302. I will see you in another episode of Azure Data Science Video Series from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.